I watched Chicken Run Dawn of the Nugget over the Christmas holidays and I was disappointed. I do admit I was four glasses of wine and a few shots of Bailey's in. However, I've re-watched it since and found my squiffy drunken brain wasn't too far off the mark. So let's talk about it. Recasting As a viewer who grew up watching the first Chicken Run, oh jeez, I'm getting old, I found when listening to the new voices of Ginger and Rocky, a little disorientating. Now, I understand why they didn't want to be associated with the original voice actor of Rocky, Ooh. and I don't want him there either, but that's not my Rocky, and I can't get over that. I know, I'm a bad person. Despite my questionable take on Rocky, recasting all these cast members didn't make much sense to me. I recognise why they replaced some of the previous cast members, whether that is because of past controversy, or they sound older, or they're unfortunately no longer with us. Yet, it just didn't feel consistent. If you're going to recast all the leads in half the other roles, I'd rather they just recasted all the roles. Then I could stop rocking on this porch of this halfway house and I can put away my nostalgia glasses and enjoy this completely new thing I'm viewing. Speaking of nostalgia and remembering stuff, you know what I mean. Show the cord! Deja vu. Uh -huh. Don't judge me. One theme I've noticed throughout Chicken Run 2 was the constant reminders of the original film. I know it's what you should expect from a sequel, but it feels like the changes they made weren't drastic enough for me to forget the first film. I guess what I'm trying to say is, this film's no Terminator 2. The deja vu's properly set in when Ginger said, Last time we broke out of a chicken farm. Well, this time, we're breaking in. I agree there's a subtle difference to the first film. However, once you've broken into the farm, you have to break out of the farm. So even though it started differently, it's still finished in a very similar way. Not cool. Not cool. I knew it was Groundhog Day when I saw who the big bad was. Yep, that's right, it's Mrs. Tweedy. In case you don't know who she is, she's the same big bad from the original film. Personally, having the same villain felt a little cheap. This was the perfect chance to bring a new fresh character into the fold, especially because it's been so long between the two films. However, Ardman stuck with the safe, cozy, established option. Now don't get me wrong, Mrs. Tweedy's an excellent villain, but I have already seen how this goes, and I know what this is gonna be. Oh. That's just lazy writing. What curdled my biscuits was how she was defeated in both films. It was suspiciously familiar. So what happened in both films was that she fell into the machine she created and then didn't die when she obviously should have. What the f is this piece of oh, Let me tell you something else, man. Seriously, a machine that blends all the chickens that go into it into nuggets and she isn't dead. I mean, come on. I don't care who you are, you could be the bloody Terminator and it would have shredded you into a bucket of confetti nuggets. Shout out Joker. I love that. And a new husband. Ugh. Despite the change in appearance, he was a clone of the first husband. A big old simpy cluck. This emphasised to me again that despite the film changing its settings and visuals, it just still felt too close for comfort. Okay, I'm telling you that my feelings were hurt. You made me feel uncomfy. Okay, so just take we'll it. The All the secondary characters haven't changed much, apart from the rats, Fowler and Rocky, which I'll get into later. It would have been great to have gotten more character development from these B characters. However, they were just there for the punchlines and to not get fined. I'm here so I won't get fined. I really love the setting of this film as well. It has a James Bond Thunderbirds aesthetic. Yet when you boil it down, it was just a fancy chicken farm. And I wonder where I've seen them in a chicken farm before. So... Yeah, originality, it's dead. I've talked about what hasn't changed. Now let's talk about some things that have. A case of the stupids. Fowler and Rocky and the rats Nick and Fetcher really wound me up. Unlike the other members of the cast, all four of them seem to have regressed from the original movie. Well, to be honest, most of the characters that crossed over from the original, apart from Ginger, stagnated. But these lot all regressed and lost a few brain cells in the process. Let me explain. And here we go. Rocky in the original film felt like he actually served a purpose. He was the catalyst for the chickens to escape the farm in the first place and help them achieve that goal. The rats, Nick and Fetcher were vital for the chickens escaping because they smuggled tools and materials for them to craft the plane they escaped in. And Fowler, well, 
Fowler used to be in the RAF and served as the captain of the plane. Again, he served a purpose to the film. Whilst in this film, they all felt like they were only there for a punchline. This is lame. If we were to take Rocky as an example, one of Ginger's first lines to her daughter Molly was, I need someone to stay here and look after your dad. <laughs> which immediately portrays him as incompetent. Then he was used as slapstick humour in his failed attempt at entering the farm, which again feeds into this incompetence narrative that was initiated at the start. He was then sucked through a vent and coincidentally found the rats, and they only survived due to happenstance of having an umbrella, which again feeds into the narrative of him being incompetent. Granted, he does save his family flying into Mrs. Tweedy, but this was annoying because he does this in the previous film. So the only good competent action I've seen him do so far was something I've already seen him do before and done better. Oh dear, we are in trouble. So in Fowler's case, he's tasked to watch the zip line because he isn't trusted to do anything more complex. This is the previous captain of their escape plane. The only other things Fowler does is verbally barrage a slug, which constantly tries to escape, which adds to Fowler being belittled, and then accidentally knock over Mrs. Tweedy when using the zip line he's guarding. Even though this action was a good one, it wasn't intentional, and it's now the third time I've seen a chicken fly into Mrs. Tweedy, but instead of Rocky, it's Fowler. Whoopee. Goldberg, just bring it! Oh my gosh! The only reason the rats were there was for the previous umbrella gag with Rocky, flying the space cloud contraption thingy, and to cry over Molly. Which is a shame because I would have loved to have seen these characters have more agency in the story, instead of everything they did was an unintended result of their f**k-ups. <coughs> right, I've spoken enough about these older characters, let's talk about the new one. Molly. Molly was a character that I think was needed to refresh the franchise, however by the end of the film I ended up disliking her. We're introduced to Molly with this montage of her growing up from an egg to a teenager, which I thought was excellent. Does he want to do that? Okay, shut up. I'll just say here though that the music they used was trash, and it belongs in a bloody creamery with the level of cheese I was being force fed. Let me tell you all about my baby. That cheese shit won't work on me, dickhead. I'm lactose intolerant. Molly's whole shtick throughout the film was freedom. However, all we see is her running around doing whatever she wants, leaping from surface to surface. This in turn made it difficult to root for her because she's fighting about something that I believe she already had. The other scene that boiled my cutlets was when Molly snuck into Mrs. Tweedy's cluck presentation room when he was showing a video of how they made chicken nuggets. Why wasn't she more traumatized from this? All right. Imagine you're watching a video and what you're seeing is another animal, say koalas, and it's about how they brainwash and turn humans into a snack food. And prior to that, all you've known is humans and rats exist. Surely that would have had a lasting, damaging impact on you. Although I might have been distracted by the cute fuzzy koalas. I'm by no means a trauma expert, but it just felt like she brushed over this devastating revelation that a whole species sole existence is to be human food. One small and extremely petty thing that I didn't like was when she said, Of course, it's me and you, kidder. And it really sounds weird in a non scouse accent. That was it. I know. I don't fancy that. When Molly ended up in the popcorn silo and cried about how it was all her fault, which it was, by the way, her parents just blamed themselves the whole time. They reacted with, No, 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 it was me, it was me. It was my fault for you being like me. And this really sauteed my giblets because if it wasn't for Molly, they wouldn't have been put in this life or death situation and would be sipping Mai Tais on their paradise island. Still, if it weren't for me, we would be on a beach somewhere sipping Mai Tais. It was the fact that no blame was put on her at all. I'm not saying Ginger and Rocky are good parents, but come on. My biggest gripe about her character was that it felt like she didn't have her own personality. That might have been due to Ardman's writing staff wanting her to be like her parents. She honestly felt like a mini-me of Ginger, even down to her character design. I mean, come on, look at them, they're the same. Molly was a needed addition to the cast in my opinion. She was the main reason the plot moved along at all. However, I think by the end of the film, her character just fell flat for me. Speaking about things that could have been better. Location, location, location. 
As I mentioned before, the setting of Chicken Run 2 is on a farm, but don't let this James Bond villain base fool you. I think this added to the feeling of deja vu and kept the plot stagnant. If the location of the film was different, I think it would have improved the story overall. For example, if the story was that KFC was about to build on the island and they had to protect it, or the island was being deforested by big corporate agriculture. To boil my point down, the setting of the film hampered the story and it limited what could have been explored and added to the repetitive nature of the movie. The thing is, I know Aardman is capable of more originality. This is displayed in their Wallace and Gromit films and shorts they've produced. These stories vary from an evil trouser stealing penguin to them building a rocket to eat on the moon because of Wallace his cheese obsession, to owning a pest control company that has to deal with a mutant bunny rabbit. But unlike Chicken Run, all these stories are distinctly different and they never feel stagnant or repetitive. Right, enough of this dastardly pessimism. Let's be nice for a bit. Honestly, I did a lot of bits in this film. Okay, first things first. The set and character design Ardman is renowned for is still on point. It was beautiful to watch despite my gripes. And the James Bond chicken farm and the island paradise were gorgeous. Go on. I love the scene where Mrs. Tweedy was introduced by her walking down the stairs. It was animated and shot excellently, and I appreciate the effort put into it, especially after watching the making of Dawn of the Nugget. It was a great watch. Side note, all my gripes are with how the story and the characters are written and portrayed, not with the effort of all the animators, model makers, editors, and VFX artists, etc. With that being said, Fizzle is my girl. <laughs> She was such a great addition to the story, and I found her funny and engaging, and her voice actor Josie Cedric Davis was brilliant, especially because she had only one other entry on IMDb before this film. I was impressed with Ginger's character development from the first film, unfortunately it felt like she was the only one that had some. Nevertheless, I loved that she had become a more conservative, reserved, anxious mother as a result of a past experience escaping the chicken farm. Ginger didn't want her child to go through what she went through. Because of this, we got a lot of character development from Ginger which was awesome, and it's a shame the rest of the cast didn't get any. Despite the cast change, the rats Nick and Fetcher were still as funny as the first film, Ramesh Ranganathan and Daniel Mays were great. I love the scene when Molly aged from an egg to a teenager. I thought this was so smart because chickens age so much faster than humans do and I thought this was a great concept. One thing I would also add to this is that I think the comedy is still just as strong as in the first film. There was a lot of jokes that hit for me. Right, one more segment, then I'll shut up. Final thoughts. Chicken Run Dawn of the Nugget's main issue is that the original was so special, but I also believe they missed the mark regardless. I'm certain that Ardman will bounce back. They're an exceptional film company and they have made multiple films and shorts that have been forever etched in my memory for all the right reasons. The ending implied a sequel and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I just hope that there is more character development and not another bloody chicken farm. Let's hope for the best. Thank you for watching this long. Let me know what you think down below, whether you agree or disagree. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Lately for my days are it all it's a main star Hottest part of the day is the way it go Trying to keep my eyes shut My butterflies feel more like a stomach bug